respected dear family members my pranams to you many people from the hindu way of life christians muslims atheists indians and also from outside india asked one important question only in hindu dharma only in sanatan dharma we have got different levels of god in all other religion including buddhism sikhism or jainism the god is only one concept or god can be explained in one line one paragraph about one concept whereas in hindu dharma we reach to that single concept ek eva hi bhutatma ek eva to that one concept we can reach through a series of pathways directly we may not be in a position to enter into that ultimate concept of god if we are belonging to the common man category whereas people like shankaracharya or swami narayana right from the beginning they were aware about that ultimate truth and ultimate fact and ultimate essence brahma satyam jagat mithya that brahma sankalpa that brahma sankalpa means the ultimate god concept rupam rupa vivarjitasya dhyayena yat kalpitam that particular ultimate truth does not have any size or shape but arbitrarily i tried to give a rupam and bhavam size and shape through meditation so it is my internal i which is responsible to explain the ultimate truth edo vacho nivartande aprapya manasaha that which cannot be explained by words because it cannot be imagined by the mind so stutya anirvachaniyata agila guru durikrita yanmaya by limited words and limitations of the language i tried to explain you even though it is 100% wrong i tried to explain you the ultimate god even though it is 100% wrong but for a common man language is the only media for understanding what is meant by god whereas no other animal has got any god concept only we the hindus have got we the muslims we the christians and the religion based people have got the god concept in the mind and that is explained by different languages in different religious books if you are going to the ultimate truth of hindus we can say in aitareya upanishad aitareya upanishad belongs to rigveda the end of the aitareya upanishad written by mahidasa aitareya it has been explained that pratyanam brahma pratyanam brahma is also said to be the message of rigveda what is the ultimate message of rigveda rigveda he consists of 3,97,556 letters 1,93,516 words from that rigveda if somebody is asking the question what is the ultimate message of rigveda one can clearly say that ultimate message of rigveda is pratyanam brahma two words 
ultimate message of Yajurveda, Aham Brahmasmi. That is given in Brahadaranyaka Upanishad. Ultimate message of Samaveda given in Chandokya Upanishad is Tattvamasi. Aham Brahmasmi means I am that manifestation of the divine power. Tattvamasi means you are also the manifestation of the divine power. And in Mundaka Upanishad it has been given uh, Mundaka Upanishad Binam to Adarva Veda it is given Ayamatma Brahma. So the the Rigveda, Ejurveda, Samaveda, Adarva Veda give in different ways the ultimate divine concept. Rigveda gives Pratyanam Brahma, Ejurveda gives Aham Brahmasmi, Samaveda gives Tattvamasi, Adarva Veda gives Ayamatma Brahma. The Vedas do not give directly, but the, the, the Upanishad connected with those Vedas explain about this Brahma Sangalpam, which is the ultimate one. Brahma Satyam Jigat, Jagat Mithya, Jivo Brahma Iva Navara. Even the life force, Jivatma, the soul present in every, every living body, that is also part of the Brahma. Now, if we are explaining the ultimate science, what is this Pratyanam? Prakarshena Yatnyanam Vartade Tat Eva Pratyanam. Gloriously, whatever is the awareness and consciousness present in every living and non-living beings, that is what is called the Pratyanam and that is what is called the God according to Hindu concept. It is not merely Hindu concept, it is the truth also. The God does not have size and shape and the God exists in every living and non-living beings. The God exists inside and outside. It is present nearer to us and farther from us. Tad ejadi, tad naijadi, tad dure, that is present in the, in the farthest of distance. Tad vandige, it is present adjacent to you. And Tadandarasya Sarvasya, it is present within everything. Tad Sarvasyasya Bhakyadaha, that is present outside everything. That particular thing we call it as Pratyanam. That is the glorious knowledge, the glorious awareness and consciousness. The glorious awareness and consciousness present in every living being is known as Pratyanam. Awareness and Consciousness, it is the synonym of the single word Pratyanam. So one can say that, uh, that divine power, Pratyanam, that is the one which the science has also taken in 1999. 1999, Gunther, a German scientist, got the Nobel Prize for proving that certain protein molecules have got this awareness and he proved that protein mode certain protein molecule not all the protein molecules have got this pratyanam awareness and consciousness what for a common man awareness and consciousness can be explained you just think about it my heart is aware that it should beat about 68 to 70 times per minute so that awareness is present in my heart and I am not instructing to my heart that it should beat it in this particular number. Every animal has got a heart and that heart will be beating not at a 68 number rate. Each animal's heart beats in its own rhythm. Sometimes the number may be 10, sometimes the number may be 150. So why this number and who has fixed this number? That number is fixed by the awareness and consciousness present in that heart. The oxygen is taken by the blood and the blood takes that oxygen to different cells. And why the blood does? The blood is a dead material. It does not have life. The blood does not have pain and emotions and feelings. But still that blood does the work of carrying the nutrition 
as well as the oxygen from one point to another point, correct destination. The iodine taken by the blood will be taken directly to the thyroid area or, uh, or the respective area. The iron taken by the blood from the food materials will be taken to the bone marrow for the production of hemoglobin. How the hemoglobin is produced? The body knows how to produce the hemoglobin and the body knows how to produce the white blood corpuscles and um, uh, each type of red blood corpuscles and so on. The body knows how to produce the hormones the body knows how to produce the enzymes. The intestine knows how to absorb the nutrition. And intestine has got the awareness and consciousness to selectively absorb these particular micronutrients and the macronutrients. So when the digestion takes place, those digestive enzymes do not digest the intestine. So those enzymes do have the awareness that it should not, they should not digest the intestine. Otherwise, these enzymes are very powerful enzymes which can even digest the meat eaten by the animals or the human being. Other meat can be digested by these digestive enzymes, whereas the intestinal meat is not digested by these particular enzymes. So remember that. If you are analyzing the human body, right from the day number one of the birth of a baby till the death of the man or woman, we can see that internally we do not have any control in the human body. That, uh, that uh, without any control how the body functions, how the oxygen is taken, how the carbon dioxide is released, how the food is absorbed, how the nutrition are absorbed, how overabsorption get prevented, how the nutritious part of the food and the oxygen taken to different part of the body, how the blood vessels are maintained, how the heart valves are maintained, how the pancreatic enzyme control, control the, the blood sugar, everything you think about it. Finally, you will come to the conclusion that my eyes, my eyes know pretty well how to, how to act and how to react. So, yet chakshusha na pasyati, ena chakshumshi pasyati, tadeva brahmatvam vidhi, na idam tadidam upasade. This ultimate divine power cannot be seen by the eyes. Yet Chakshusha na pasyati. That God, that divine power cannot be seen through the eyes. But ena chakshumshi pasyati. Through that divine power, my eyes are in a position to watch the things around me. So the my eyes watch outside, look outside and see the things present outside. Because of the presence of that divine power in the eyes, the moment that soul, divine power, Jivatma, Paramatma, Pratyanam, the, uh, once that Jivatma, Paramatma leaves the body, then even though my eyes are there, the, my eyes will not be in a position to watch outside. Because Jiva, awareness and consciousness is not there, in the eyes. Similarly, my nose can feel the smell of it, good or bad. It is exclusively because that awareness and consciousness present in one square centimeter of the olfactory lobe of this nose. My tongue, which has got approximately 14 centimeter long, has got the, the ultimate, the ultimate sensory part of sensory part of this particular uh, biochemical materials biochemical materials so remember that my tongue has got the awareness and consciousness 
my tongue has got the awareness and consciousness. From where it came? Due to the presence of the ultimate divine power within me. So for Hindus, the God is present within the body. That is why applied spirituality, we in fact worship, in fact we respect, in fact we adore every living being in the earth. All the animals are connected with the gods mainly because divine power is present within that. A rat or a cat or a dog or an elephant or a monkey <coughs> or for that matter take tulasi or banyan tree or any plant you can see that the awareness and consciousness are present in that. When the mango tree produced the flowers the awareness present in that tree that on so and so date onwards, so and so season onwards, the flower should be produced. Every bit of the flower has got the awareness to produce the small mango. And the mango has got the awareness how to become a big mango. And that big mango has got the awareness how to convert it from the sour taste, acidic taste to the sugar, sweet taste. It has got the awareness in that one. So like that, even if you are taking the tapioca, the cassava tapioca, you can see its leaves. Leaves know how to convert the solar energy into the starchy Tapioca. The tapioca is produced with carbon and hydrogen taken from the air or from the soil using the solar energy. That carbon and hydrogen got converted into that cassava or tapioca. This conversion of carbon and hydrogen into the root, the storage starchy root or the fruit, or the stem, or the leaves, all the plants, all the animals do have the awareness within that how to, how to produce, maintain and kill its tissues, its cells. So awareness is present in every living and non-living being. That is what we call the ultimate divine power where they do not have any size and shape. Tupam, Tupa Vivarjitasya Bhagavato Dhyayena Yat Kalpita. You do not have any size and shape, but I arbitrarily through meditation gave you a shape. Stutya Anirvachani Yata Dhilaguro Dhuridhritayan Maya. I just adored you, explained you by words even though I know that words cannot explain you by, uh, by the correct size and shape. And I know pretty well that you are present everywhere. Still, I thought that you are present in the temple. Vyavitvam cha niragritam. So you are present everywhere. But niragritam yat bhagavado yat tirtha yatra dina. By doing tirtha yatra, I informed my mind and I informed others that God is present in the temple. Definitely God is present in the temple, outside the temple, and everywhere that divine power is present. That is the ultimate God for Hindus, which we call Paramatma Chaitanya. If it is present in a living body, we call it as Jivatma Chaitanya. And that itself is called Brahma Chaitanya. That itself is called Parabrahma Chaitanya. Just like we call the, the same person in different names. Same person, how can we call in different names? I am the son of my parents, I am the father of my children, I am the husband of my wife and 
I am the brother of my brothers and I am the neighbor of my neighbors. I am the citizen of India. Even though I being one person, I can have different titles like that. The God has got different titles whereas ultimate truth is one. Try to understand. But till you reach that position, all the other pathways are needed. If somebody would like to go to New York, you cannot directly land in New York. You have to catch a flight from Delhi or Bombay or Kochi or Chennai or Bangkok or, uh, or uh, Kuala Lumpur. You have to catch a flight. Then the flight has to fly and it may be having different stops also. Then only it will be reaching the New York. So, for different people reaching New York is not possible by the same flight. Those who are coming from Kuala Lumpur, those who are going from Colombo, those who are going to New York from Mauritius, those who are going to New York from South Africa, those who are going to New York from Washington, the flight, the route, these are all different. Like that, different people have got different rules depending upon where they stand. Where to go is important, where you stand is unimportant in other cases. But in this case, where you stand is more important because the ultimate, uh, ultimate point is God realization. The moment you know that God is awareness and consciousness, the whole problem is solved because I have got that divine power within my body. You have also got that divine power within your body. So we are the manifestation of the same body. So we are the brothers having the same energy in our body. That is why we say, Aham Brahmasmi. I am the manifestation of the God. Tattvamasi, you are also the manifestation of the God. So we are not different. We should exist together. Sahana Avavadu, Sahana Ubunaktu, Sahaviryam Karavavahe. Try to learn this from the Upanishad and teach others. My pronouns to you. Thank you very much.